McMurphy uh, certainly has been a highlight in the last 24 hours. I can only imagine what the phone has looked like. I appreciate you spending a couple of minutes with us here in Tuscaloosa. I hope you're doing well. Thanks. I appreciate you having me on. Hey, Brett, uh, what is, what has the last 24 hours for you been like? Can you give us a little insight? <laughs> uh, pretty crazy. Uh, obviously, I never envisioned anything like this occurring. I, I thought out the story because I had uh, found information that there was some domestic violence issues in Zach Smith's past. He was in Ohio State's wide receivers coach. And then I report uh, what I found out. Urban Meyer denies he knows about it. Um, then I am able to talk to Courtney Smith, and she shares everything she knows. And I make my report yesterday. And then all of a sudden, I'm on Sports Center more yesterday than I was my five years at ESPN. I've done, I've had media <laughs> media requests two from CNN, MSNBC, Inside Edition, which my wife said that show's still on. <laughs> um, and I. Literally 100 radio interview requests. It, it, I'm trying to keep up with them, but it's impossible. I'm literally trying to get in as many as possible because I, I appreciate people, you know, wanting to talk to me. I, I don't take that lightly. But quite frankly, it's impossible to, to respond to all of them uh, just because I'm literally, as soon as I hang up with you, um, where am I at? Uh, oh, I'm talking with LA. So it's been crazy. But Again, I, I'm. I don't want to put the focus on me. I mean, it's you know, it's it's disturbing what has happened to Courtney through this whole thing. But quite frankly, if Urban Meyer doesn't deny it Tuesday in Chicago a couple weeks ago at Big Ten Media Days, I don't think we're in this position. But now we are in this position, and I think the obvious outcome is that Urban Meyer will never coach at Ohio State again. You know, it, it's. It's unique to watch this, but but Brett, I, I've I've covered a lot of stories, negative. You know, with it, I've been involved in 18 years here in Tuscaloosa doing radio, and yesterday when I'm reading your report, watching some of these video, the the, the photos, and watching uh, Courtney explain her story, I mean, the human side of me, it, it was disturbing for me just to even read that stuff. I mean, I mean, like you, you know, what, you know what I mean? Like it, it just bothers you from the inside out. I mean it. It's it's a rough story to even cover, and you have to sit here and talk about it and read about it. And it, it's I, I can only imagine what she went through. Yeah, and that's the whole thing, and that's why ultimately she decided to talk to me was because she got she left Zach in June of 2015. They were officially separated November of 2015, and she was granted a divorce September 1st, 2016. She thought when she left Zach in 2015 that the abuse would stop. It was just the exact opposite. The abuse escalated. She was, you know, allegedly assaulted in October of 2015. There was a stalking charge in November of 2015. The harassment continued. I saw, you know, hundreds of text messages that she showed me that Zach had sent her. I put one on Facebook about how he was going to, you know, effing kill uh, that person, and when I see your, she is dating someone now currently, and when I when I see him out in public, I will f him up, uh, you know, to the to the point that you will not be able to recognize him. I mm. mean, these were just some of the hundreds of emails where it's just, again, I know husband and wife have disputes, I know they have arguments, but this this was downright threatening. Um, emails and she and text excuse me and she basically said at one point um during one incident where he she said he threw him her down on the kitchen floor and she basically said at that point my life's in danger i have to make a change now and then the fact when um she finally left him she basically at that point she was no longer dependent on him as far as his income and she wanted to just she wanted to get her story out, and that was my whole aim in this whole story was just you know show her side of it, um, what she could prove through text messages and documents and emails and photos, et cetera. And in the process, you know, I'm looking at all this information, and I asked her, "Well, did Urban know?" And she's like, "Well, yeah, because here's these te text messages that show that all these people told them." Now I don't have a direct text message from Urban Meyer that says he knew about it, but you look at all the evidence and it's pretty obvious that there's absolutely no way he would not be aware of this. When you, when you look at, 
and, and I guess that was going to be my next question is, is in your opinion, you, 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 you don't doubt that, that Urban Meyer knew about this. Well, no, because I, again, I saw the, um, I saw hundreds of text messages back and forth. Shelly Meyer and Courtney had multiple conversations. She saw the, the, the pictures. Uh, she, at one point, Shelly said, I have to tell Urban. And, and, and Courtney said, tell Urban. Um, also remember back in 2011 when, when they were at Florida, Zach assaulted her when she was 8 to 10 weeks pregnant. It was on their one-year wedding anniversary. Ultimately, Courtney decided not to press charges because Hiram uh, DeFreeze, who worked for Meyer and his, his current title now is special assistant to the head coach. He's been with Meyer for 20 years. He met Courtney in a Panera Bread in Gainesville, Florida, and basically forced her, or pre- not forced her, but pressured her to drop the charges. So she relented and did that. So she dropped the charges. Urban admitted that him and Shelley actually counseled the young couple. Zach was 25. Courtney was 24. And so you're telling me you're going to fast forward five years. There's more domestic violence between the couple. Shelley knows all about it. They counseled the, the, the couple together, and now she's not going to go to Urban and tell him what happened. I find that impossible to believe. Brett, do you think there's more to this story? Do you think there's more? Because I, I know your attention to this situation, there's probably a lot of investigative reporters there on the ground. Do you think there's more coming? I don't know. I mean, again, I you know, I know what Urban said. And, you know, if, if Urban did know, I mean, you want to speculate. So if Urban did know, did he notify Dean Smith, the athletic director? I, I don't know. I don't have any information that he did or did not notify him. But certainly if he did, then is Gene Smith in possible violation of Title IX um, issues and or the school's um, misconduct policy, sexual misconduct policy, that states you have to notify a supervisor if you have, if you're aware of any possible domestic violence issues. So that's something um, you have to look at. And certainly that's something that Ohio State is going to be investigating because obviously once they make their decision on what they're going to do, they don't want to come back and have other information come out that maybe that further clouds their initial uh, initial decision because obviously that would make Ohio State look bad, but more for the university's thinking. They don't want to open themselves up to lawsuits if somehow they, they keep people on staff that, that knew about this or were involved in not reporting it. I just have a hard time believing when I when I watch these coaches that micromanage their program. I mean, I mean they know the janitors. Uh, they know when the floors are swept. I mean, I watch a guy in Tuscaloosa that 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 knows, you know, every part of the program. And I believe that Urban Meyer's that same type of way. I I just to me, I just find it hard to believe that this. I, I believe you. I'm just talking about. How do you ignore this? Is my 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 whole entire rebuttal is is I, I look at this case and I'm just going, how did I mean? Because I I think we have law enforcement. I mean, how, how is this guy not in jail? How has he not uh, been arrested? Well, obviously that's questions that the power police will have to uh, address. I do know when I initially reported the 2015 incident Monday at Big Ten Media Days. The original copy of the 2015 arrest report I had showed that Zach Smith had been arrested. There's a there's boxes on there on the status of the report. Right next to arrested, there was a big black X. When the revised report was distributed to the media a day later after I reported about it, the X had disappeared <laughs> from the arrested um, box. So I called the Powell Police Department. I'm like, I've got a copy of the original report where it shows he was arrested. Now you're saying he's not arrested. How is that possible? They claim that some kind of difference in terminology and yada, yada, yada. I, you know, my head was wrong. Eyes were rolling in the back of my head. And I'm like, well, do you see what this looks like? I mean, how do you, how do you report somebody was arrested in 2015? According to your records, you know, you can only check one box. You can't check multiple boxes. How can you tell me that he's arrested and then three three years later when you release this to the informa- to the to the media, 
all of a sudden that box is, is not checked. So that's something I'm sure that the, that the local reporters in, in Ohio, hopefully I cer- certainly hope they're looking into, you know, why the, the Powell Police Department had the inconsistency on his arrest, and, and maybe they can shed some light on why uh, he was ultimately not, not charged or convicted for this when you see the, the evidence with the, uh, with the photos. Well, Brett, listen, I've got a million questions, but I know you got another interview obligation. I don't want to take any of their time that, that you've promised to them. I do appreciate you spending some time with us in Tuscaloosa to try to shed some light on uh, the conversation. Just a credit to your hard work. And, uh, uh, Brett, what, what, is there an announcement about where you're going? I mean, as far as a, a college football analyst, or where are you going to be covering college football? Is, is, is there a website? I mean, I, I've seen reports out there, but I, I don't want to uh, throw something out that I'm not supposed to. No, that's fine. Basically, I'm uh, we'll be joining uh, Stadium Network starting August 13th. Okay, and uh, it's a digital sports network out of Chicago. So I'll continue to cover college football there, and obviously, we'll still be on face uh, Twitter and Facebook. Maybe not as much. We'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm excited. My deal uh, with ESPN ends, and what do we got? 11 days, 12 days left, and then I'll move on to Stadium. And very excited. So I appreciate you. Asking. Hey, Brett, thank you again, and I'll invite people to connect with you on the Twitter account, at Brett underscore McMurphy. I appreciate you spending a couple of minutes with us here in Tuscaloosa. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much.